Welcome to Storytime. We are going to hear about Dido Elizabeth Bell. Maybe you know who she is. Well, we are going to find out a bit more about her life and why her story is so important. Dido Elizabeth Bell was a British mixed race gentlewoman and a member of the Lindsay family born in 1761. She was born in a completely different time from us, over 250 years ago. And I am very excited to hear all about her. Are you? Are you ready for story time with Dido? I can't hear you. Okay, okay, let's begin. So, Dido was actually born into slavery because her mother, Maria Bell, was an African slave. Her father was Sir John Lindsay, a British career naval officer who was stationed in the West Indies and met her there at the time. This meant he spent a lot of time away from England and often at sea. He was captain of the British warship HMS Trent. He was knighted and promoted to Admiral, which gave him a higher status. Lindsay took Dido with him when he returned to England in 1765, entrusting her raising to his uncle William Murray, first Earl of Mansfield, and his wife Elizabeth Murray, Countess of Mansfield. While she was placed in the care of this couple who would raise her as a gentlewoman in English society, she was never to see her mother again, I wonder if Dido ever missed her mother. I wonder how much she remembered her. She would only have been three or four years old. We believe the Murrays gave Dido a very good education, so different from the experience of many of the black and mixed race people living in London at the time. Many of the black and mixed race people living in London would have been servants, extremely poor, soldiers or beggars. They would have had a very different life from Dido, and perhaps Dido would have felt sad to see this. They would have raised her as a free gentlewoman at Kenwood House, together with another great niece, Lady Elizabeth Murray, whose mother had died. Lady Elizabeth and Dido were second cousins. Dido lived at Kenwood House for 30 years. Dido's great uncle, William Murray, was Lord Chief Justice. He would have been pretty much the highest judge in the UK and had the final word on all disputed cases. He was a very clever man. In his time, slavery existed and his niece Dido was technically a slave because her mother had been one. We have to wonder if he felt pressure when he would rule cases about slavery. He ruled in a major slavery case of James Somerset, finding in 1772 that slavery had never been set out as a rule by law or government in England. Here's where many people got confused. Lord Mansfield only ruled in the 1772 James Somerset case that slaves could not be transported out of England against their will. He didn't rule that slavery should end, despite many people thinking so. However, this ruling is now often viewed as the beginning of the abolition of slavery, the end of slavery in law. This did not come until 1833, which neither William nor Dido lived to see. Dido's way of life with the Murrays is still not fully known. We have some accounts, records from people who visited the house. But we all know that visitors do not see how a house is normally run, and so we cannot assume that these accounts are the whole story. We do know that when people visited the Murrays, Dido did not eat with them. However, it does seem that she was able to join the other ladies for coffee in the drawing room. Hmm. I wonder if Dido felt sad to be excluded when her cousin was not. As well as being mixed race, Dido was a child of an unmarried union, which people called illegitimate at the time. 
She would probably have been mistaken for a servant often and not allowed in the front door. This label of illegitimate could have caused her to endure other insults or rudeness, as well as being mixed race at the time. I hope you'll agree with me that that doesn't seem nice or fair. We do know that the Murrays did look after her well. Records have shown her being given costly medical treatments and a wonderful bedroom, which show that the Murrays viewed her as dear to them as Lady Elizabeth, her cousin. When Dido was older, she managed the dairy and the poultry yards at Kenwood House. This was a normal job for a gentlewoman, but helping her uncle with his correspondence was not. That was usually a job for a male secretary or a clerk. This shows us the level of her education must have been very high, and that Lord Mansfield considered her not just well-educated, but intelligent. A painting of Dido and her cousin Elizabeth was commissioned by Lord Mansfield. We now know it was painted by David Martin, a Scottish painter. In the painting, we can see the two young women portrayed as equals. While there are differences in their dresses and what they are holding, it is clear from Elizabeth's hand on Dido that they are close. As they would have grown up together as children, it is not hard to think that they would have been like sisters. Even though they did not share the same complexion, the same skin color, Maybe you can think of friends or cousins who are like brothers or sisters to you in your life. What do you think that was like for Dido? Ten years before his will was published in 1793, Lord Mansfield stated formally that Dido was to be given her freedom. Despite being in the care of her biological family, she had actually technically been a slave whilst living at Kenwood House. Another thing Lord Mansfield did to look after her was to make her an heiress. This meant that after his death, she was to receive £500 and an additional £100 payment every year. In contrast, however, Dido's white cousin Elizabeth Murray was left £10,000 by Lord Mansfield. Dido married John de Vinier, a French man who may have worked as a gentleman's steward on the 5th of December, 1793 at St. George's, Hanover Square. Although sadly her wedding was not attended by Lord Mansfield who had died in March, 1793, just months before. I wonder how she felt to be a free married woman after her life with the Murrays. Dido and John, had at least three sons, twins Charles and John, as well as William Thomas. Dido died in 1805 when she was just 43, and she was buried in July 1805 at St George's Fields, Westminster. It is believed that burial site is now Bayswater Road. So that was Dido's story. I love her grace and excitement in the painting, don't you? I wonder about what her life must have been like. I hope you will find out more about her. Thank you for listening so well. That's all for now. See you soon.